Hello friends, my name is Shashank and welcome back to this new video and today in this video we will try to understand the broken windows theory and crime prevention for security professionals and what are the applications of this theory to prevent crime in your area, right? So let's start this video. So first of all, let's understand what is what is the meaning of broken window theory? Actually, it's the theory which was uh, coined by these two uh, scientists, I would say, James Q. Wilson and George Kelling in 1982. As you can see, these two uh, scientists conducted an experiment to understand the link between the disorder and crime within the community, which means that why there is a disorder and crime in the communities and they came out with this theory which is called as the broken window theory so we will understand what is the meaning so it's a kind of metaphor right to explain the link between the disorders and crime right so what does it mean when you say there is a broken window you might have seen in your locality or in your community when there is a vacant house in your area in your community the people will try to uh, break it they will try to steal things from that uh, vacant house, right? So you will see if the one window is broken, the other windows will also be broken one by one. So this is what means is that if one window is left unrepaired, which means that the rest of the windows will be will soon be broken. So this is the one uh, consequence which uh, which we get in result when we left the broken window unrepaired, right? And it's also a signal that no one cares and it's okay to break other windows too. For example, if I, uh, 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 if I abuse somebody and that person doesn't uh, uh, come back with the aggressive mode, which means that that person doesn't care and it's okay to abuse that person more, right? So exactly in the same manner, if I uh, break your bike, right and you doesn't care you are not filing any report it means that it's okay to damage your bike more which means that the person who is the owner of that building or that property does not care and it's okay to to create more damage so which results to crime right so now let's understand what does it mean if the broken window of a house is left unrepaired which means that if, if the windows is uh, uh, left unrepaired, which means that the owner is not uh, uh, available, but if it is repaired, which means that the owner is present in that building or of that property and that owner cares about his or her property and he will or she will not tolerate its disrepair, right? So it's exactly similar in the field of security. When someone tries to uh, get access into your facility through any uh, unauthorized means and you let that person come inside and go outside freely, which means that the security professionals of that uh, facility does not care and it's okay to breach access control more and more, right? But what if the person uh, who is the owner of that uh, building does not repair its broken windows which means that the property has no garden which can be the one possibility right or it's an open invitation right that every window will be broken and vandalism of the house will imply which means that soon one by one the all windows will be broken the people will take the doors the uh, expensive items of that house right so this is what leads to the crime so this is the uh, overall, I uh, would say, brief introduction about the broken window theory that it means if you left your property unguarded, unrepaired, it will lead to more and more damage and ultimately it will result to a crime, right? So that was the experiment which was conducted uh, by these two scientists. So after conducting that experiment, they came up with this theory, which means that once there is a disorder in the community, right? If there is any kind of disorder in your community, like there are open lands which are unguarded, like there are open uh, vacant buildings, there are uh, uh, vehicles left unattended for a long period of time. So these kind of disorders 
leads to crime right so there is a direct link between the disorder and the crimes and then these crimes will lead to more disorder and crime right so this is how this window this broken window theory uh, come into picture when we talk about the uh, security incidents theft burglaries and all these things which means it starts with a disorder and disorder can be anywhere it can be inside your house outside your house in your locality in your community anywhere and if there is a disorder there is a possibility that it will turn into a crime scene or a hot spot and then it will lead to more disorder and crime in that area right so what can we do so before we try to uh, resolve this or to break the chain of this uh, disorder and crime there are two different types of disorder which uh, the scholars have generally defined which one is the physical disorder right the first one is the physical disorder under which the comes is the vacant buildings right if which means that if in your community or in your facility there are vacant buildings it's the signal that it can be turned into a crime area it can be used for illegal activities drug trafficking right prostitution and all these things if the windows of any house is broken it will lead to more damage to that property if there are abandoned vehicles nobody is caring about this vehicle there is a possibility that those vehicles will be vandalized there will be more damage to be done uh, will be done to those vehicles right and there are vacant lots filled with trash which means that there are open lands uh, nobody is caring about nobody is the owner uh, it is and it, they are filled with the trash right so it will lead to more crime and disorder in that area and now second one is the social disorder so what does it mean social disorder means aggressive pan handlers there are people with aggressive natures right there are noisy neighbors there are a group of youth congregating on street corners you might have seen in your community in your locality when there are few dark patches where there is a uh, limited light you will see a group of youth young people standing there in a group right laughing uh, teasing and planning something which we don't know we might have we, we have seen these things and we have experienced it's kind of a very awkward uh, you can say scene right so which means that if your uh, buildings or if your locality is not uh, fully lighted up there is a uh, lack of light right illumination in your area it can be used by the young people to make their groups gangs and all these things so which means these two disorders are interlinked with each other physical and social which means that if you have this physical disorder you will give more opportunities for these social disorders to to come into play right <clears throat> so this is the relation between the physical and social disorder so now uh, let's understand the zimbardo experiment the experiment which was conducted by these two scientists was replicated by the zimbardo by placing two automobiles new automobiles in two different areas of his uh, city the first one was put into the bronx and second one was put into the palo alto california right so what happened he took two vehicles he removed the license plates and parked them idly in these two uh, localities right and after weeks he came to know that the car which was parked in the bronx was attacked within minutes of its abandonment it was completely destroyed damaged but the and at the same time the vehicle which was parked in the palo alto was sat untouched more than a week what does it mean it means that the city of bronx where the first vehicle was parked was a hot spot for crime related activities right why because there was a disorder in that locality but what happened in the palo alto it was a more ordered right there was less crime right so nobody touched that vehicle but after two weeks right 
the zimbardo came back went back to this area palo alto and he saw that the vehicle was left untouched so he himself damaged the windshield of that vehicle and within few days the whole vehicle was damaged so what does it mean it means that even in those areas where there is a less crime rate right if you give the opportunity if you create disorder there will be a possibility that crime will spur into those location locations which means that disorders and crimes are interlinked the social disorder and the physical disorder which means that people are having the tendencies to exploit the opportunities which we create uh, by creating a physical disorder right so this is how you can understand in your facility in your area if you are in charge of your uh, building or your area as a security in charge you can see that if you give the opportunities by leaving the buildings vacant by leaving the areas uh and uh, and not not under surveillance right if you uh, let people come and go without any questions it will soon be taken as a sign that nobody cares and it will give the more opportunities to the socially uh, you can say the those people who are ready to exploit the opportunities given by you so now what is the application in security relating to the broken window theory and in crime prevention first of all you can start crackdowns you can increase the security how how you can increase the security you can either increase the security by increasing the number of uniforms right the men in uniform or you can do it by electronic means right you can increase the visibility which means that you can increase the patrols right you can start uh uh awareness sessions right you can uh, uh check uh, you can start the price checks in the important areas or in the areas which are not under surveillance right or you can uh, plant the undercover officers in such areas where there is a, a chance of crime so these are the three things which you can do to actually reduce the crime rate in your area right so let's see what are the different actions you can take there are different actions which you can take the first one is you can start conducting random field interviews by going to the random people asking them questions what are you doing here what's your name do you have any work permit right you can uh, issue written and verbal warnings to, to the people who are like uh, not following the rules which will increase the deterrence right you can start conducting highly visible patrols for means you can uh go to different buildings can meet the building owner or the area owners right uh, start uh, mock drills you can start uh, different types of awareness sessions right or you can start uh, traffic stops if you have the big facility you can start checking the vehicles for the documents or any other uh, you can say uh the violations of uh, traffic rules inside the area right or you can start checking the work permits and their ids to just to increase the level of deterrence in your area which will actually uh, spread uh, like a wildfire that security is increased and now it's not easy to uh, violate the rules right so now let's talk about the different types of security activities like you can target the specific high crime prone areas and you can start conducting uh, security awareness session at, as i just explained you can conduct ambush you can start improving the place management which means that you can just uh, try and try to uh, characterize the assets what are the assets and who is the owner and then give the responsibility to that uh, owner to manage that place right so this will also reduce the crime in your area and these are the different kinds of field activities which you can do the first one is you can check the fence because if the fence is damaged or broken for some time it it will give you a direct uh, invitation to the violators that it's okay nobody is caring and and i can get access through that broken or damaged fence or boundary wall so if you see any kind of damage in your boundary wall or in the fence it is your responsibility to get it repaired as soon as possible right then you can see start the physical inspection of the sensors and alarm devices so that you don't uh, rely uh, on the uh, 
electronic uh, gadgets which are not inspected for a long period of time which might not work during the actual intrusion right you can start uh, installing lights in the areas where there are dark patches or if you see there is a, a less uh, illumination in your area you can just increase the illumination by using the light meters and then go increase the lights as per the standard because light is one of the factors which can uh, increase deterrence which can in actually reduce the crime right or if you see any kind of vegetation which is actually obstructing the views of your cctv cameras video cameras or it's just exploiting the line of sight you know, obstructing the line of sight right through the buildings or outside the boundary wall you can just try to remove it to have a clear view which will also uh, increase deterrence so what are the consequences if you do not uh, uh, increase or if you do not reduce the disorder in your area the first one is it will uh, become a hot spot of crime it will lead to panhandling prostitution and drug dealing in your area uh, or outside your area right and if you see the buildings are vacant nobody is going in the buildings are damaged if you also you will see uh, be a part of illegal activities right yeah. and it will create more problems for the whole whole neighborhood and the society with less involvement of community because when there is a, a fear in the community right they will start doubting on each other and they will not cooperate in the way they 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 should so these are the consequences which can lead if the uh, there is a disorder and there is a crime in your area so finally the conclusion which means that little things matter which means that if you take care of little things the big things will take care of themselves and if a window is broken if there is any kind of damage in your facility or in your property get it repaired as soon as possible because carelessness implies vulnerability and it's an open invitation for the violators to just violate the the security rules and regulations and get the unauthorized access in your facility so that's all about the broken window theory and i hope that you can learn more about the broken window theory through different articles and essays written on this right you can just search on google and get a detailed analysis or detailed understanding of the broken window theory or the crime prevention through environmental design right so that's all for today's video thank you very much for listening to me and i hope that i could uh, explain the things so that you could understand it so if you like this video don't forget to like share and subscribe my channel thank you very much